Hey yeah, folks, welcome along. This is Chandran here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Grim Fight in all of its glory. We're going to go over how to defeat him in most every way possible, from the intended way to the cheesiest one-shots. All of this on Tactician, of course. Specifically, we are doing group using hammer, group without hammer, soloing using hammer, soloing without hammer, a cheesy known danger solo, and finally a one-shot by dealing a full 2020 damage in one fell swoop. Literally. The links are in the description below, and you are highly encouraged to jump around as you please. If you just want to know it all, or you're new to the fight, just keep watching. I will explain the mechanics during the first section, where we go through the intended way to kill him. We're going to start out with how to defeat Grim the intended way, and the footage here is plucked straight from my original encounter and sped up a bit to be tolerable. While we watch the fight, I will go over the mechanics. The Grim Encounter has four mechanics that sort of dictate the flow of the fight. First and foremost, Adamantine Skin. For default, Grim is entirely immune to any damage due to his Adamantine Skin. This mechanic is handled by the debuff Superheated. He starts with it on him, using him standing in lava, and it goes like this, basically. Whenever Grim is dipped in lava, he becomes superheated and susceptible to certain types of damage. He's still immune to lots of damage types, and those damage types that work, they still only inflict half damage on them. He has resistance, with one very notable exception. When he's superheated, Grim is vulnerable to bludgeoning damage, so he takes double damage. With at least resistance to everything else, this means that Grim will be taking four times as much damage from a bludgeoning attack as he would from any other similar attack. So take this into account when choosing weapons for the fight, and it's even worth it to change your weapons if you are already stuck in a fight, just to have a bludgeoning weapon online, uh, provided you have the option, of course. If you don't, don't despair, as the game has provided a very powerful option for you. The Forge Hammer itself. This brings us to the second mechanic. You can pull the lever to make the Forge Hammer drop onto Grim while he's superheated for a huge chunk of bludgeoning damage. Dropping the hammer also knocks Grim prone, and it removes the superheated debuff from him, so it makes him invulnerable once again. Take that into account when deciding when to let the hammer fall. The first time the hammer falls, it also brings a little surprise with it in the form of four methods. You should probably make these critters your priority, as the heat metal ability will make you drop your weapons, which is bad potentially even into the lava. Dropping the ha hammer onto Grim sounds great in theory, but first we have to actually get him to come stand below it while superheated. Luckily, there's a third mechanic that helps with this. Vengeful Guardian. Grim's aggro table, that means who he attacks, is determined differently than other enemies. Grim will always go for the last person that damaged him. This means you can decide where he goes, and you are very much incentivized to make him chase someone out of reach, as his main attack hits like a truck, uh, quite frankly. If you position correctly, you can lure him onto the hammer on his very first turn, and if lucky, he will still count as being on low ground for the lava. This brings us to the final mechanic, the lava lever. Once Grim has been hit by the hammer, or if two turns has passed since last he was in lava, he will stop being superheated, making him invulnerable once again. In order to get him superheated again, you have to bathe him in lava once more, and the lever is uh, there that makes the lava flow into the area again, covering the low parts. If you were precise, or lucky of course, with your positioning, Grim might already be on low ground and he will get the debuff immediately. Otherwise you'll have to drag him through the lava once more using the Vengeful Guardian mechanic discussed before. Remember, jumping is an option for you and it's not for him. You will keep using various stump abilities, dealing area of effect damage and possibly knocking your team prone, so be careful how you position. You can spread out so only one or two people get hit by this at once, and you probably should to be honest. And lastly, I have one specific one. Attacks of opportunity might screw you over royally here, uh, if you're not careful. A successful opportunity attack will make Grim change his mind and go for that attacker instead, so he'll probably turn around and down them. Make sure to turn your opportunity attacks to ask on the reactions in your character panel, uh, or be ready to tank Grim where he stands. Which of course could be an option if you have a character with good enough defenses for that. I was sort of leaning into that here, but it never really turned out to be relevant. Good. That should cover the most relevant mechanic of this fight, and hopefully it will allow you to get the bastard down. For the rest of this fight, I'm just going to talk a bit about the strategies and tactics I'm using on the screen as they happen. As you can see here, I've got Will in position to deal with some of the methods. Mm -hmm. I want to take them out as quickly as possible. Specifically, I want the one that is keeping my character's uh, initiative apart, and that's I should have gone for that one first, I, I forgot that I had the advantage on the first attack and not on the second, but we should still be able to get it down here. So once I have that one down, all of my characters will act together again and it's a lot easier to set up the guiding and stuff like that. I forget to move Will out of position here, 
He's still standing on low ground, which is bad. He should be up on the ledge because I want to be flooding the, the area with lava now. I believe that I can reach all the way to the vault with Chantron here if I give him the dash thing. And it seems like I can when I look at it like that. No cross. But unfortunately, once I actually go there, it doesn't work. Maybe it's because of the attack or maybe I couldn't in the first place and just noticed it wrong or something like that. But I have to redo my uh, my tactics here and go for someone else to activate the lava. I do want the lava to be on Grim this fight, uh, this turn, of course, so I can drop the hammer again. I didn't know at this point that you can just shoot these uh, valves and levers to to activate them. Uh, I figured that out after trying the fight a couple of more times. But you can see I use Kallax's entire action there, and and Wolf takes a lot of uh, beating from the lava um, because he was in a bad position. Could have just moved him out uh, before that. Drop the hammer again, deal him a lot of damage, and he's almost dead by now. I think we could probably. Um, I did it too early, I should have attacked with Chandran first here, but now he's invulnerable even though he's lying there in the lava, so we just have to wait till next turn. It should not be really not that much of a problem either. Shadowheart heals Will a little bit, just so he doesn't drop. Um, I want her near the hammer again, I don't know exactly why, to be honest. I should have just moved her over and used the potion trick instead of using a spell slot for that. But it doesn't make that much of a difference. He starts walking through the lava now, gets super heated again, and uh, now he's vulnerable enough that we can finish him off. Take care of the methods here with Will, using the force damage because he doesn't have his his weapon available, and Shovel just finishes us off. And Kalak can throw something at the boss to get him down. And that is sort of how the fight goes if you want to do it the intended way. But of course we are not satisfied with that, so for the next part we are going to turn up the mastery a bit and try to see if we can do it with a group, just without using the hammer. So the first thing you'll notice here is that I've positioned myself a little differently from the beginning just to be ready for the potion trick. And by the potion trick I mean we are going to be using Shadowheart's equipment to get Blessing and Blade Ward onto our other people and uh, using a potion of speed in a way that works on all of them by only using the bonus action of one person. While Shadowheart is getting this ready it takes a little fiddling around sometimes. I will talk a bit about some of the changes I've made. The builds are the ones that are up on my channel. You can uh, watch them there. And since this is a level 6 we're doing this at, they all have an extra level. Tav, uh, Chandra, my Tav, has an extra level of Warlock. This is what allows him to be using uh, a bludgeoning weapon here. It's not going to be that relevant, but a uh, bit. Shadowheart has just another level of Cleric. Will has a single level of warrior, and that's only for level 6, it's probably going to be changed out at level 7. So he has great weapon mastery. And lastly, Karlak most relevantly probably has a level of monk, which allows her to do flurious blows, as she's going to do and go and do right away. You can see her to hit chance because of Tavern Brawler is, is really nice here. Lock of the Far Realms is about to proc. And I'm not going to be using another her because there's no specific reason to do it. It's not that much more damage in these uh, unarmed attacks here. And now the flurry of blows, I think, yes. Uh, fairy fire on Grim to get advantage. Karlak would have it anyways because of her gloves, but the rest of them uh, needs it for advantage on, on to hit. I think for some reason Will is doing lower damage here than he was intended to. I, maybe it's because I don't have the passive on for Great Weapon Master. The, the feet. And uh, you can see he's supposed to be using Lock of the Far Realms as well, but for some reason it says that he, he can't do it. He's, it's, he's missing his reaction or something like that, which is not... Uh, it should not be true. So it's some kind of bug, but it doesn't matter because I am getting lucky and I crit on this attack here, which means I get my bonus action as well, which was what I was planning to allow with the Lock of the Far Realms, otherwise, just to wait a little bit or more. And Shadow Art has already both Fairy Fired and Broken Potion, so no actions for her. And uh, Shovel just needs to get out of the way. We don't need him for this skill, and I just don't want him to die. So moving him out of range for the Quake. And lastly, Shandran. There's not a lot of room in melee, and I don't want him to be hitting anyone anyways. So shoot him from range just to lure him over there. I think we're just using Eldritch Blast here. We don't really need... I'm considering Mirror Image, I think, but I don't think we need it. So just wail with uh, damage. It's not going to be a lot of damage from, from this force because he's resistant to it, but it's enough to, to draw the prime target buff from uh, Vengeful Guardian and then we can just run off and stand over here and be pretty or something. The gods are watching me. So 
all of the characters are wielding blocking weapons at this point. It's mostly, uh, you can see here, he did have his reaction. It's mostly Will and Karlek that it's relevant for because the other ones are not going to be doing that much of a damage. The Quake that hits everyone is annoying. I had pre-planned for this and put a set of boots and Shadow Heart instead of the usual ones that give temporary hit points. I put a set on her that makes her immune to prone while she's concentrating, so she wouldn't auto lose uh, the fairy fire there. Just keep wailing with Karlek. Four attacks for 22 each is nice, or around 20 each. And we even have the Fury of Blows there that I chose not to use because he's so low at this point that we're probably able to, to get him down with Will and maybe a little extra. We, we do need to have some misses otherwise it would be silly. And lastly, we just have Shantran here. I think I start off with the Slashing Flourish. Someone had uh, told me that it worked, like it would actually hit twice on the same enemy. It could be used for that. But either that was on a, a previous patch or something, because it definitely doesn't work here. As you can see, I haven't really used him uh, to do the melee one before. I, I usually do the, the ranged one when I actually do it. And there we go. Grim is dead. There's not a lot to this other than just laying on the damage as, uh, as much as you can. Fairy Fire helps. That's it. This was easy enough that I decided to go for some solo kills on him as well. And this next one we're going to be looking at is a solo kill using the Forge Hammer. So for this one, I'm going to kill him solo with Karthik. I say solo, but it's not technically true. Shovel is there as well, but it's her ability, the Summon Quasit. So I think it counts. She also has the Warding Bunt from Shadowheart, allowing her to take half damage during the fight. She shouldn't be taking too much damage, uh, unless I screw up something, but it, it's still a good thing. She could also get the same effect by raging, uh, but that would also mean that he has advantage on her, which it doesn't really matter. He's, he's hitting her most of the time anyways. As you can see here, first thing we do, Potion of Speed. Doing the, I call it the Potion Trick, it's not that much of a trick at this point, just using someone else uh, to activate the potion so she doesn't have to use her, her actions or her bonus actions in this case. And it also means that Shovel gets the extra movement speed and the extra action. The relevant part here, of course, is the speed effect on Karlek. I don't have advantage for the first attack, but due to the gloves I'm using on her, the sparky, the real sparkle gloves or something like that, the sparkle gloves, I think they're called, she um, she will get advantage on further attacks, as you can see here, giving her a very nice chance to actually land these uh, melee blows. It's the same for her ranged thrown weapons. It's because of the tavern brawler feat that allows her to add her strength twice that she has so high a chance of uh, of actually hitting and then couple with advantages because because he's made of, made of metal and that's what the sparkle hands check she stays in melee here she can take a single blow from him with the resistance granted by the warding bunt shovel doesn't really need to do anything i i think i um, go invisible here in order to bait the grim to go and see if he can he can find it or something hoping for an attack opportunity but i think it's too close to Karlak, so he should be able to go and look anyways getting shovel in position for dropping the hammer next time and getting very lucky here with the miss having a miss from the beginning there is obviously great but a little bit of damage would not have um, made the fight go any any different even knocking her prone only takes up a little of the movement and it's not that precious as you can see, I didn't bait the attack of opportunity that I had hoped for, but it doesn't really matter because we are back in the game and keep wailing on him. It's approximately 20, 22 points of damage each time we, we hit him and we have four regular attack and uh, two from the bonus action if you want to. So um, just from 80 to 120 damage per turn. And now we can Misty Step away, trying to see if we can bait him under the hammer with a Misty Step. I don't use the bonus action here because we do want to get him under the hammer. As you can see, this is one of the first uh, attempts I have on him. I'm still thinking a lot about what to do, what specifically, where to go, and stuff like that. But it turned out it wasn't that hard, so I didn't need a lot of uh, need a lot of tries to be honest. Uh, he's a lot more of a pushover than I had initially saw, thought. I thought doing it with the out the hammer would be sort of uh, sort of hard-ish, and and the solo ones would be require a lot of positioning and stuff like that, but to be honest, not really. Uh, having Shovel there is obviously uh, a great thing, so we don't need to use Carlax actions in order to pull the lever. If you don't know how to pull levers with Mage Hands or summoned uh, Imps, Quasits, whatever uh, animals you have, you just attack it. And this goes for anything else as well. 
I didn't know that in my first attempt, I think I've talked about that. I You can just shoot a lever or a valve or something and it will activate. So if nothing else, you can see I have equipped Kalec with the double hand crossbows here. We win the initiative automatically in this fight, so it doesn't matter with her normal bow for extra initiative. And the double hand crossbow gives her a ranged ability to, to activate the lever in case we didn't have shovel or if shovel died to some weird stump or something like that. But that's not too relevant. Heading in for uh, the melee there, but I think it stopped uh, her randomly and I decided to just throw instead. I think the correct move here is just to keep throwing. Uh, I don't know why I don't. Um, maybe I decide that it's better to go for a melee or maybe I misclick or something like that. Anyways, now that I'm in melee it's not a problem. We can still just wail on him and we have the flurry of blows as well that we needed to use anyway. So we were gonna end up in melee under all circumstances. So it's, it's not really that much of a difference. I think at this point he's uh, low enough that we should be able to just drop the hammer and kill him. And I'm fairly certain that is exactly what we're going to do. But notice Kalex positioning, because I did not. I thought she was standing firmly on low ground, but uh, apparently she got hit by the hammer as well. She's not vulnerable to bludgeoning damage and uh, she has resistance from Shadowheart. Otherwise that would have been a, a fun, fun way to end that encounter. Getting grim, but getting yourself as well. And straight on to the next one we go. Now for the next level of mastery, we are going to be attempting to kill him without the hammer, soloing with Karlak. We will use a uh, shovel to start the event here, but then we do something different. We turn them both invisible. This means that the combat doesn't start automatically. To turn her invisible, I'm using... Um, I think it's a hat. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll throw something up on the screen. So she gets to start here. This means that Grim starts surprised and we get an extra round of actions on him, basically. It also means that um, I should probably worry a bit about the Potion of Speed effect because uh, the lethargic kicks in after a couple of rounds. Uh, just a misclick there. We want to get the Potion of Speed down using the same trick as before to get it on both uh, Shovel and on Karlek, of course. And other than that, we're just starting off in the same. But I think the, the real difference here is really getting him surprised from the beginning. It's a lot easier with only uh, a closet that can go invisible at will, and then uh, one other person. If you had your entire party, you would need some way to turn them all invisible. Definitely doable. And uh, if you're struggling with the fight, that's one way to make it a lot easier, just to start off with a surprise round. There's some wonky mechanics about how exactly you enter combat in the beginning if you are invisible. Uh, it's very important that you do it in the first round before he actually lost, but you probably would so anyways. Shovel uh, gets away. He doesn't need to go and click the, the handle, but he's getting over there anyways. I think I just want to keep him out of it this time. Not get too close to get uh, get knocked by quakes and stuff like that. There's no reason for push Shovel to die, right? So, he's not surprised anymore and he still hasn't done anything, and we are ready to just wail on him again. It's not exactly the most tantalizing gameplay, I must admit, but it's very nice that it's actually an, it's, it's possible to just do it like this, even a, a nice little critical there. And I believe we just stay in once again, in order for to land a, a couple of extra damage on him. Uh, I might have been wrong, I don't know what exactly, he has a breakpoint somewhere around half the way through the fight where he starts doing uh, more interesting stuff than just... Uh, Instead of awakening on his first turn, he does something else, like Seismic Roar, or I don't, can't recall what they're, what they're called. As you can see, I'm moving Shovel back here instead, for some reason. The slam this time hits. 16 damage is not a problem. Uh, 32 would not have been that bad either, but it would have been sad. And the Quake here again. Also fine. You can see we are happy that she has the resistance from Shadowheart. We could have handled that by going Berserk, as I mentioned before. And we just keep wailing. We are going to have to step out of the fight for minutes in a second here because of the potion of speed. We don't want to be standing in there with him and being lethargic. Uh, we have the misty step, as you can see I'm hovering over it here. For for that exact uh, effect, it's still the two items. Uh, oh, I miss this. sad. I think I'm just using the critical there because I missed. It makes no sense. 
sometimes I do silly stuff like that. Get Kalak away. You should be able to get her so far away that he, he can't really reach her, even though she has to skip her, her next turn. It's quite important to, to not be anywhere close. And then we have to be able to activate the lava again in a second, so we need to get the superheated buff back on him. And then all the way over here, and then let's see if he has, um, has the movement to reach her in two turns. Because the next turn, both of our characters are going to skip out because of the motion of speed, as I mentioned. That was the first turn, not a problem, he can't even stump. He just stands around confused for a while, which is a little annoying to wait for, but... That's how it goes. 92 hit points should be fine. It's something we can take care of over a while, but we need to have the superheated debuff back on him before. And we also need to remember that we don't have we don't have uh, the speed effect anymore from the potion. I think we, we could in theory just quaff another, but there's no real reason for doing that. We we should be able to take care of him without that. Still no lava effect on him. No reason to hit him. Let's get the a lot of dodge, I think it's called. So, get as much range between uh, Grim and Kalik as possible, so he has to chase her around for a little bit longer. Preferably through some lava. So, as you will notice here, I, I do uh, a silly mistake. It's not going to be that much of a problem, because you can still position him. But instead of moving her up on the ledge, where she would be safe from incoming lava next turn, I, I keep her on the low ground. I think I'm worried. I even realized it in the beginning there. I think I'm worried that he could reach you or something, but that's silly. He can't move that long. The shovel here. Can't activate the lava there as he was supposed to do. So he'll just have to wait for next turn. But since we can alternate who goes first, Kalak or shovel, it's, it's not a problem. The stumps are getting, uh, getting rough. And we also have a reason here that her raging is not as good as the warning bond because he would have had to skip a turn there which would have been bad um not doing anything lava's turning in here i think i moved Kalik up in time before the lava actually comes out but that was a uh, that was a bad mistake and it could have cost me that win just getting back into melee now that he has the superheated buff and we should be able to to slam him good here um not enough of uh, not not an, uh, enough movement here because of the prone effect, and this is why we are carrying about a lot of light hammers. And we should be able to. I don't know if we can actually get him down this turn, or if he gets to us first. I think it seems like we need to run away once more, and this is why we have the second misty step. We can get as much distance between us and the the big bad boy as, as possible. In this case, I should have moved further away. Uh, there might be a position where I could stand where you wouldn't be able to reach her even with the stump. Uh, if I'd misty step the whole distance. There's a little more positioning and tactical to this one than to some of the others, even if it's not using the hammer. He gets close enough that he can stump poor shovel, which means we lose shovel, which is uh, sad. But the last throw in, he's down. Right. And this is how you kill... Grim without using the Forge Hammer. For the next two parts, it's going to be some cheesy attempts. My idea was to see if we could kill him without putting Kalik in any sort of danger whatsoever. As you can see from the first attempt, just one single miss and she, she was really home safe. But what we're doing here instead is we're teleporting up to the, the Forge point using Featherfall from a set of boots. We don't have to do that from up here, it's just to, to get Shovel down there as, as easily as possible. The platform is lowered already, and he, for some reason Shovel teleports back up with her when she teleports. But we want him down there to activate the fight, and we want Karlek up here. So, we start the fight, get Shovel into position, and make him invisible, just in time even. Uh, should probably have reversed the order of those ones. Once again, we have it set up so we can surprise strike, do it right away, so as not to fuck too much with the lava. He's now surprised. It's not that relevant that he's surprised here, but we we don't want Ka uh, Shovel to be on the other side of him. We want to be baiting him into a position where we can hit him from above. Skip the entire turn here because of the surprise, and now he starts rumbling after our poor little closet. If you're all the way out on the ledge, you 
can't actually get you, and because it's in the beginning of the fight, he hasn't taken a lot of damage yet. He, he won't do the, the stump thing. I believe that's the reason, at least. Get over to the position over around this place, and importantly, use the invisibility. This will mean that Grim walks over looking for the closet, and meanwhile, we can line up something. The first thing I tried was just throwing a very heavy chest into his face, thinking that from this height, that damage would definitely kill him, but it, it really basically didn't hurt him at all, so that didn't work. Um, so I had to sort of uh, go back and, and try a couple of other things instead. So the next thing I thought about was just let's see if we can kill him, just throwing regular stuff. And we tried just that. It's the same thing down there, the setup is exactly the same as before. This time we just throw a hammer instead, enter combat with him, even do a critical hit, which is nice. Again. And um, we just keep throwing things here. Uh, I quaff a potion. This time there's no reason to do anything fancy, we can just drink it uh, straight up. Just to have more attacks, but I think it might also be slightly bugged from this position. It's it's cheesy as fuck what we're doing at this point anyway, so I don't mind um, the, the extra bark here. We're just trying to do it uh, anyway, really, that uh, doesn't put Karlik in a lot of danger. You can see poor Shovel down there is uh, out of commission. I think what we are seeing here is just the usual... You, sometimes you get an extra action when you enter combat without being stealthed. Uh, I don't know exactly how it works. If it's not on the first turn, you enter combat without being stealthed. There's some wonky stuff about the actions, but we can keep throwing. And, and as you can see, I throw. A, I think I throw more hammers than I would be able to in a, in a regular turn at least. I think it's four or five, uh, five probably now. But if the first one doesn't count, and it uh, starts the actions from when she's actually in combat, that should be the four hammers. I'm not sure how it works. Or well, the last one here, I wanted to see whether or not it was possible to do a, a one-shot somehow of him, and since I couldn't just throw something heavy, I figured that maybe I could be heavy and jump into his face. So with a elixir, a colossal elixir, whatever it's called, elixir of the colossus, and an owlbear form, we should be heavy enough to squash squash him. Uh, the owlbear has an attack that does bludgeoning damage, I believe. It flies into the face of stuff. I've seen this in another YouTube video where someone did it into the, the face of some ochres early on. And I figured that it might work here as well. So, Kalik is up on the same ledge as before in owlbear form. Shovel is initiating the fight here from invisibility, getting the surprise, running to his position, so so as not to get attacked because he's 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 a goner if he gets attacked by Grim. Skip the turn because of the surprise. Have Grim awaken and run after Shovel. And if you've already seen the positioning from before with the hammer throwing, you should know that this is going to be the exact same. We're going over to this position here, around here. It's, it doesn't actually need to be perfectly positioned, but it's sort of that area. And use invisibility, have Grim run over there, change to Karlik. Grim is walking over there in the meanwhile, and we're ready to jump into his face. Just having him in the target here, and the Albear goes wee and splat. For a grand total of 2020 damage, which is more than enough for one shot. This was why I was expecting to happen before with the chest as well. So. See? Tell you choose, Beefy! Trust me. Always. Yeah. Always! And uh, of course, Shovel wants to claim this one as uh, being his idea. So, that should be it for this time. I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least parts of it, if that's all you watched. Thank you for joining, if you have been. I've been Shant, and you've most definitely been awesome. Don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, and bye-bye.